Isaiah, Isaiah chapter number 27, Daniel is the 27th book of the Bible. In that day, very three important words, the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword, according to uh, Ephesians, that is the word of God. According to Hebrews, that's the word of God. According to Revelation, that's the word of God. Shall punish Leviathan. Job 41, Psalm 74, Psalm 104. Who is Leviathan? Elephant? Crocodile? Ostrich? Dinosaur? Just what? is Leviathan. Do, 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 do. Let's read the Bible. The, the, for all those, those people that can correct the Bible and come up with crocodiles, the piercing serpent. Uh-oh. Piercing serpent. Read Job 41 about that one. Even, in case you didn't get it the first time. See, stay with, my prayer is I don't ever correct the word of God. I don't see a note as in crocodile or anything like that. Just what the Bible says. If I don't know what it is, I hope you see to Genesis 1 to, to Isaiah 27. I'll tell you what I don't know what it is. And if I'm supposed to know what it is and I don't, I don't. I'll learn. Even Leviathan, that crooked serpent. So he's a piercing serpent. He's a crooked serpent. And he, God, shall slay the dragon. Uh-oh. That is in the sea. Now you go back to Genesis. We're not going. Cause we're, we're studying chapter by chapter. You go back and look at Genesis chapter 3 in verse 1. See what it says. Something that is subtle. Then you go over to Revelation chapter 12 and see what it says. Something about an old. Something about a dragon. And they lump together. Then you go to Matthew 4 and Luke chapter 4 when this, this thing speaks to Jesus. It's Satan. That's what it is. And when you look at the old, old world maps, and you see this little, this little dragon swimming around. Well, that, you know, evidently that's not in the in the uh, Atlantic Ocean. It's not in the Pacific Ocean. No one's ever seen it. So it's got to be above your heads, according to Genesis chapter one. This this serpent that's in the sea. The sea is above our heads. We are underwater. We're not going to just get into the sea here. We are underwater. And a, a god that goes fishing by cracking the ice and dropping the hook down to pull men out or liken to their father, Satan, who's a liar, who's a murderer, and said to a bunch of men, I think he said something about, be ye fishers of men. You gotta be careful what Christians draw up as symbols. I'm looking at a belt I like, but it's got that fish symbol. That's nothing to do with Christianity. If that symbol is, 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 is Jesus, are you telling me that Jesus ate himself when he fed the multitude? Twice? Are you telling me that Jesus ate himself when he fed Peter, James, and John after a fishing trip on the, on the, on the coast of uh, Galilee? Because didn't they have fish for dinner? Am I correct to think? I think. This one I'm not sure. But in the upper room when he showed up after his resurrection, they had fish. So what you're telling me, if that is a symbol of Jesus Christ, Jesus ate himself. Now, that's not a foolish Roman Catholic doctrine of all ages. What is? 
Even the Roman Catholics don't say Jesus ate himself. There's a being in heaven. Five of them there were. One had the face of a man. One had the face of an eagle. One had the face of an ox. One had the face of a lion. There's a certain class of animals that are gone. That's not there. If you find Ezekiel, you find in Revelation. It's not there. It's a serpent class, reddishy kind of amphibian class. So let's go save the turtles in Florida. Let's go save the whales. Why are you trying to save Satan? Even I was foolish. When I was first saved, I read the book of Revelation first. It scared the fire out of me. When I got done with the book of Revelation, I was praying to Satan to be saved. I was dead serious. I read the book and said, Satan, you're going to hell. Get saved. I was witnessing to Satan. I know it ain't going to happen. In that day, those three words again, sing ye unto her a vineyard of red wine. Proverbs 23, 31 and Psalm 75, 8. But vineyard. Jesus spoke vineyard, spoke about parables of vineyards. Like into Israel. There was a man that went out and planted a vineyard, put a uh, vine fat in it, put a tower, put a city about it, put men in there, and he sent his, his sons, he sent his his uh, his prophets, and they killed them, they stoned them, then he sent the son. So now we're talking about a vineyard. Vineyard produces grape. Well, what is it that Israel is likened to? It's likened to a sour grape. It's likened to a, a, a bitter grape. It, it, it's not part of the vine. Jesus is the vine. Wine. New wine. Not old wine. He ain't interested in old wine. He's interested in the new wine. I, the Lord, do keep it. The vineyard. And keep it means it's his and he's going to take care of it. I will water it every moment now what, what's that kind of watering it gets me to wonder if, if we're jumping into if, if this is the millennium and we're going to return back to the times of Adam and Eve before they fell we're going to be living pre Genesis 3 you know what the Bible says that God did not rain upon the earth he had a mist it was a continual mist to water the earth thereof. So you're not going to get too much rain. You're not going to get too much moisture. You're going to get just enough. If we go back to pre-Genesis 3. Least any heard it. I will keep it night and day. God's the protector. Behold, the eyes of the Lord in every place. You're not going to miss him if he's doing the protection. Fury is not in me. Who would set the briars and the thorns against me in battle? Oh, well, in the parable that Jesus said that he, he sold wheat. An enemy came by night and sold terror. Briars and thorns, oh boy, which is one of the judges there chasing the enemy because of the city. He said, Where's this guy? Oh, you know, we need some food. We're not going to give you no food. We're not going to do nothing for you. Well, listen, when I find this guy and I get care, I'm going to come back and I'm going to get the briars and all that and I'm going to teach you a lesson. In other words, they're going to tear their butt. Discipline. Who's going to go against God in battle? I know who. When Satan's loose after a thousand years, he's going to gather up an army. I would go through them. I would burn them together. Briars, thorns, and I just said I forgot. The tares are likened to lost men. Do a study about those and you'll find characteristics of lost men. We Christians are to be fruitful trees. 
or let him take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me he shall make peace with me well what's the strength that you get peace with God the Lord Jesus Christ my Bible is churning because Satan does not want me to teach. He shall cause them to come. Who, he who? Ask yourself a question when you read it. Who is the he? Peace? I don't think so. Peace is not a person. Or let him take hold of my strength. He shall cause them to strength. He shall cause them to come of Jacob to take root. Where? In the vineyard. Israel shall blossom and bud in the vineyard. And fill the face of the world with fruit. You're reading about the millennium. You're reading about, hey, here's this vineyard that God plants. And now here's the plants. They have been grafted back into the vine and they grow all over the world. Jews are going to be all over the millennial earth. And they'll be back like they're supposed to the three times in the year like the law says. Can you imagine being a ruler of a city as a born-again Christian that suffered with Christ? Can you, imagine, can you see the, the, the jubilee? Can you see the caravans as those times of prayer as they're all coming all, I mean, Jews and the Gentiles are all coming at set times to go see Jesus Christ. This is a time where the Bible says you don't preach Jesus on the street. They know Jesus. Can you imagine once in your life, here you are, you're sitting on your porch, and here come a bunch of people. Come, let's go see the Lord. Well, you know, you have a heart attack. Remember the days of old in America. Where no one wanted to go to church. No one wanted to go. Here they are all going by caravans. Has he smitten him? As he smote those that smote him? Or is his slain according to the slaughter of them that are slain by him? I mean, Israel, in time of Jacob's troubles coming. It's a pull your pants down, son. I'm going to spank you because you have been rebellious. You didn't learn with World War II and Adolf Hitler. You didn't learn with, with, Adolf, with World War I. You didn't learn with Babylon. You didn't learn with Rome. You didn't learn with Egypt. I'm going to get Satan after you. Man, he's going to do a thorough job. He is bound in determination to destroy the Jewish race because they're God's people. You know, he's bound to destroy the church. There's only a few little pickings of those that are doing right. There are churches that are falling by the wayside, left and right, and still falling. In measure. When it shooteth forth, thou wilt debate with it. He stayeth his, his rough wind in the day of the east wind. By this, therefore, shall the iniquity of Jacob be purged. Purging is to be cleansing. To be cleansed. To be made clean. And this is all the fruit to take away his sin. When he maketh all the stones of the altar as chalk stones. That are beaten to beaten in slender, asunder. The groves and the images shall not stand up. Now what's going on here? The purging of Israel is the end of idols and images and false altars. They're going to break them down. They're going to destroy them. And they're going to serve God right, perfect, 100%, finally. 
You want to see a mess of images and idols and false worship and groves and, and junk? Go read. Go read the life of the kings of Israel and Judah in 1st, 2nd Chronicles, 1st, 2nd Kings. Go read the, the idolatry in the book of Judges. That will be all gone. You're going back pre-Genesis 3 where it's only God and Adam. I don't mean Adam's going to be there. I'm saying all it'll be just like it was with God and Adam. And God will come in the cool of the day and say, hey, where are you? Yet, the defense city shall be desolate. And the inhabitants forsaken. And left like a wilderness. There shall the calf feed. There shall he lie down and consume the branches thereof. He's going to walk in this city and dine. You ever seen cows and all that? They, they have no care. As long as there's food, they're happy. When the bowels thereof are withered, death, they shall be broken off. The women come, set them on fire. For it is a people of no understanding, knowledge of God or anything. Therefore he that made them will not have mercy on them. God's our creator. And there are people, God is love. The Bible just said, he will have no mercy. How's that? Man has a choice. And he that formed them, God, will shew them no favor. First Thessalonians 2, 14 through 16, the great white throne judgment. Can you imagine that moment when God tells man to go jump into the lake finally? You don't think they're going to plead? You don't think they're going to scream out when they finally real, realize it is real? When your parents scream out to you as Christians that they're sorry they didn't listen to you. That they never did what you told them to do, if you told them what to do. Imagine your children screaming out in agony and defeat when they have denied your Savior, your neighbors, your co-workers. You imagine somebody sitting in church lost their entire life. I'm not talking about someone easy believers. I'm talking about sat underneath the church and heard the gospel message over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And never got right. And never get mercy. And never get favor from God as he casts them into the lake of fire. Because they did not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. How simple is it? When people walk by on a sidewalk in a city where Christians do what God told them to do, whether it's signs, whether it's knocking on doors, whether it's preaching on the street, or passing out gospel tracts all over the place, wherever, whatever it is that God would have them to do, and you reject their counsel for whatever reason, Religion, science, pride, money, fame, whatever it is. And you stand before God and God has pronounced go to the lake of fire thousands if not millions of times but before he's gotten to you if not billions of times. And you know by now what's going to happen. At that moment you cry out to God for, for love. God your love. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever, you know, point to all the Christians, that believeth on him shall not perish, 
but shall have everlasting life but to, unto those uh, with the last verse in John chapter 3 he that has the son has life to him that has not the son go into the lake of fire the Lord and screaming out no no absolutely not Can you imagine the God that we are reading, verse 11, to a group of Muslims who has killed Christians, has killed people in the name of Allah, without mercy and grace. At that last moment, they cry out to the God of the Bible, the Lord Jehovah, have mercy on me. No! You never had mercy on my people. You never believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't think the right way to judge. Okay, just go go jump in the lake of fire. And they're just going to do it. They're, they're going to be screaming. They're going to be fighting. There'll be angels casting them off. Yet the God of love that I see over the billboards and the signposts of the churches left and right, do not. Preach Isaiah 27 verse 11. The God that said, I will have no mercy on you. I will show you no, no favor. Jeremiah, don't you even pray for those people. There may be an opportunity. God, why won't you hear my prayer about that person? God may be saying, I don't want you to pray about him no more. That's the God of the Bible. Adam, do not eat that fruit, lest ye die. What's it say in Genesis chapter 5? And he died. You know what God says? What God says is what God says, plain and simple. Today, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You do it any other way. And you will be charged with a Christ rejecting, and you'll be cast off in the lake of fire. And you'll what? What did that guy in Luke 11 want? He wanted himself. He wanted his self. He wanted I. He wanted me. He wanted mercy. And he never got it. He even wanted mercy for his brothers. Amen. Nope. They got the law. That guy in hell never got one request. Did you know that? Even by his family. Don't tell my family. Don't come here. No, sorry. Not going to do it. That's the God of the Bible. And it shall come to pass in that day, mark those three little three words in your Bible, that the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river unto the streams of Egypt. So guess what? Egypt as a city is never going away. It's still there today. Where's Nineveh? Where's Tyre? They're gone. God said Tyre would be gone. Guess what? Tyre's gone. And ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. God is going to regather Israel all over again. He's going to gather them up. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown and shall come and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria. And Satan's chasing them. And the outcasts of the land of Egypt shall worship the Lord in the holy mount at Jerusalem. He's going to pick them up on sale of Petra too. The Bible. Genesis to Revelation is about one man, Jesus Christ. 
They say every chapter is something about Jesus Christ if you study. Some of you go far as every every verse. John 1 1 says the word is Jesus Christ. Genesis to Revelation is all about Jesus Christ. From Genesis 12 to eternity, there's one nation above all nations. There is one nation under God. You, you want to believe who it's not? Let's talk about who it is. The families of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the 12 tribes. That's what the Bible is about. You know why Gentiles are let in? Because we are a stumping stone. We are, we are to anger Israel. God says, you don't want to believe me? I'll go get those dead dogs. They'll believe me. And the Bible says about the Jew, they are enemy of the word, of us. And they are. But we're still to pray for him. We're still to witness to him. We get the opportunity. And all the millennium, when chapter, when this chapter started off, the serpent, by the word of God, has been chained. And as we go into a period of time about a vineyard, and a thousand year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ, as that vineyard stretches out. And God cleanses that vineyard, cleanses that grape, cleanses the fruit, cleanses the vine, and protects it. A nation that is under God is Israel. We're entering into a time period that I can tell you after, after the church disappears, this is what's going to happen. I know. I don't need a tarot card woman at the flea market. I know what's going to happen. The church is going. One of these days. Bye-bye. One of these days, there's going to be an event. The trumpet, not the dingling be church bells. There's no dingling church bells in the Bible. The trump. If you want to call a church somebody, why don't they use a trumpet? Da -da -da! The call and assembly of the church, according to the Bible, is a trunk, not a bell. So you're wrong. Not a hymn. You don't play hymns. You want to call your church together, you call a trumpet. What was it back in the Old Testament? They made silver, tr uh, uh, they made silver trumpets for the call and assembly and calling the war on it. But let's, let's move on pathetically. What's happening? At one time, the trump is going to blow. Every born-again Christian, alive and dead, are going to be gathered together in the cloud. We're all going to meet together in the clouds. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hi, Son. Hi, Sister. Hi, Friend. Hi, Brother. Hi, Sister. Hi, Pastor. And then we're going to be gathered together. Then we're going to go to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ before we go to heaven. Meanwhile, sometime after we're gone, a period of seven years will begin. How much after the rapture? I don't know. But a period of seven years called in the Bible, Jacob's Trouble. Called the Tribulation, then the Great Tribulation, the last three and a half years, where Satan is going to rule the earth. Everybody's going to get their hell on earth and get Satan rules. Yeah, you're going to get them for seven years. And there are going to be plagues in 20 one plagues and three woes. Blood. You want to die, but there's no death. Hailstones, earthquakes, Satan ruin. You finally get your mark that you've been so fearful. Christians are gone. We're at the judgment seat of Christ. We're not on earth. Moses and Elijah, two Jewish people running around causing more havoc. 144,000 Jews witnessing. Jews are losing their heads and they're taking the cup 
getting the blood and drinking the mass. Jewish blood. Jesus is a Jew. When you go to a mass, you're drinking Jewish blood. If it's really the blood. If it's really transformed into the blood of Christ, then it's Jewish blood. Then everything's going to end with the lights going out. All natural light will be gone. There will be no moon and no sun. At all. That will end the seven year tribulation. And then you'll be there and you'll see this light coming out of the tunnel. I saw this light. As I laid on the hospital bed, they gave me all these drugs. Pumped them into my arm. I saw this light coming. And it's going to come, it's going to get closer and closer and closer. And you're going to realize that that light is a flame. And you're going to take all your gods. And you're going to cast them into the holes. You're going to go hide yourself from him that's on the horse. As we follow those who are born again. Those the following Lord Jesus Christ as we come back as a second advent, as a lion of the tribe of Judah, he's not coming back as that baby anymore. He's coming back in anger, and the word is going to slay that dragon and all those that are under his care. Verses 1 through 4. And as we go through south of Palestine and stop at Sel Petra and pick up the Jews that are hiding out there in that area, we go up the King's Highway and we go into a place called Jerusalem, which the whole world has been absolutely changed. It's not like the maps they are today. Jerusalem is the mountain of the world. And as the Lord Jesus Christ enters Jerusalem, Hosanna, glory to God and highest. Praise ye the Lord for a thousand years. There's no crucify him. There's no crucify him. There's no Roman government. But it's the Lord Jesus Christ sitting down as David bows down and says, Lord, Messiah, this is my throne. Please sit down. And David the prince, as the temple is there, as the offerings are made, day and night as they were prescribed by the law for a thousand years the curse is removed off the earth there is no Genesis 3 there is no Genesis 4 there is no Genesis 5 there is no giants in the land there is there is perfect harmony perfect atmosphere uh, a mist watering air a thousand years the Jews are right the people are right there is the Lord Jesus Christ there is the Prince David of the nation of Israel in Jerusalem as the temple is there, as they're doing what's supposed to be. There is the twelve apostles of the land serving the land. There is a ambassador of a thousand, if not a million, if not a billion representation of those that have served Christ and done right, ruling in cities. I don't know about those who don't rule for Jesus Christ. I don't know where they are during all this. But if you suffer because of the Lord Jesus Christ and the word, you will get a seat in the rain. You'll be in this millennial planet serving and being part of the festival, as I said, in those times and years when it comes up to Jesus, this is a great, it's just the earth is just filled with not rap music, not rock and roll, but people out of their own mouth singing to Jesus as they go. Now you think that the shepherds in the day that Jesus was born with those angels, what do you think it's going to be like in the millennium when the angels are taking part of the worship and the saints of God, those are born again, are taking part of the worship. And when you see the seraphim taking part of the worship and you see all the Jews finally taking part in the worship and the priests are doing part of the worship and they're in the temple and they're glorious time. And the Bible says in those times that the earth rang out and the earth shook. And if you see a lion, you pet the kitty because he ain't going to eat you. All the animals, the curse is removed off of, and they're being a help to you. 
and you see a pack of lions is getting is getting dark, Daniel, and we'll just settle down. There's a there's there's a pack of lions there, and you go up to them, you pet them, nice kitty, they start purring, and you lay down those lions, you. Oh, what a craftmatic bed. Thank you, Lord, for a good night's sleep. Then you get back up like Daniel, and you get out, and you go serve the Lord. Book of Daniel. I did, didn't I just say that uh, the 27th book was Daniel? As Nebuchadnezzar's image is thrown down, broken down, dissolved, as they are called out of the iron furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, and the go. Didn't we just say out of Egypt? Do you imagine Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Meshach, and go right there in the millennium? Let's go! I'll show you who he is. He was in the fire with us. Freak the king out! Don't you tell me Shadrach, Meshach, and Ingo didn't go around talking about that afternoon all the time in their life. We got the joy, joy, joy down deep in our shut up, guys. And then deep in our hearts. Deep look, look no smoke, smoke. Shut up. And they were in the fire. Well, guess what's down in Sela Petru? Guess what's down in the Dead Sea? The lake of fire. But you don't go walking through that with the Lord Jesus Christ. You get devoured by the lions if you're against Daniel. Judgment. And then Satan's loose. For a very short time. God throws down fire. Destroys him. Puts him into hell. Great white throne judgment. There will be no mercy and grace to those that have rejected Jesus Christ. There will be no mercy and grace against those that have rejected God in his word. Achan. Joab. King Saul. No mercy. Will the Lord the king? No, I don't care. You disobeyed me many times. What about David? You don't worry about David. You worry about yourself, king. Go through all the kings. Of, there was not one king right in Israel. Jeroboam, step up. What about those stupid calves you made? You've made all the kings of, of your land worship them. The Lord has a, I don't care. Jump into the lake. The Lord, jump in the lake. The Lord, jump. In that lake. Lord, forget. Angel number one. Do it, please. And then the new heavens and the new earth and new Jerusalem. No Satan. No curse. No sin. No tears. No pain. No sorrow. All about Jesus. All about the Jews. That's the Bible. That's all about the Bible. And I didn't mention America once. I didn't mention Germany. I didn't mention China. I didn't mention Japan. I didn't mention anything but Jesus Christ and the Jews. That's it.